ever used a fork for sewing? No? Me neither. We are going to see if this really works. Welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where we do all sorts of DIY and creative projects and I bring you along for the ride. So if you like crafting, if you like sewing, if you like general creative fun, then I do recommend you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. So we are gonna try the pleat method using a fork. I basically kept seeing this all over TikTok, all over Instagram Reels and I was like, uh, this is not gonna work like you guys make this look way too easy specifically i spotted this girl's tiktok these are the instructions that i followed to create my skirt so i will link this in the description box down below so yeah i thought you know what let's give it a go let's try it out let's see if it actually works spoiler alert it actually does but it's not as easy as it looks so if you want to learn how to make a tennis skirt, then you're in the right place. If you want to learn how to use forks for something other than eating, you're also in the right place. Forks away, into the video. That was well cheesy. So the first thing you're going to do is find a material you like, a little bit of a heavier weight, wash it, iron it. I'm lazy, I didn't iron it, but we're going to make our waistband first. The length of this needs to be your waist measurement plus four inches and four inches across the shortest side. And the rectangle for the actual skirt needs to be a waist measurement times about three by the length of the skirt. So mine hit roughly my knee plus a little bit extra for hemming. Hem your material before you start. So now to the really complicated fork pleating. So with a straight stitch, we're going to go down the material. It's so much easier for you to just see this. So pause this, replay it a couple of times. You put your fork in with the bottom prong and you just kind of twist it over itself and it creates this pleat. You're just going to stitch over it with a straight stitch and we're going to do this all the way down the material. Once you've done this, you're going to grab your iron and you're going to keep, well, you're going to iron these pleats in all the way down. So you're going to go around the material, you're going to put these pleats in and you're gonna just iron them so that they are nice and in shape and they keep their shape. Well, they're gonna straight stitch down some of these pleats to get the kind of iconic tennis skirt look. Now, I personally think I stitched a little bit too far down. I didn't need it to be quite so high-waisted. Uh, so measure how far down you want it to be kind of more structured. And where the stitching stopped is where the pleating will start. So next we're gonna join it at the side seam and we're gonna add in an invisible zip. So you need to grab yourself a zip, okay? So you need to measure the zip up against the side seam and put a mark where the bottom of the zip stays. What you're then gonna do is you're gonna set your stitch length to the longest stitch length, stitch all the way down, take the zip off, make sure the zip's nowhere near it, stitch all the way down to that mark where you made where the bottom of the zip starts then change your stitch length to the shortest stitch length and then just carry on stitching all the way down to the bottom. The basic principle is we do a basting stitch the length of the actual zip and then we can just unpick it once we've sewn the zip in. So this is where I switch to my zipper foot. I pinned the zip into place. I stitched all the way around the outer edge of the zip so that it was really, really securely in place. I hate doing this. I hate sewing in zips. It is proper one of my actual pet hates. I do not enjoy it. I always find it really, really finickety and I still need to kind of um, perfect my own technique. I'm really not very good at it. But here you can see me just spinning the material to go across the bottom and then I'm coming up the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab an unpicker and we're going to unpick those basting stitches that we did earlier on and hopefully that should leave us with a really nice clean zip now in place. So now we're going to attach the waistband. So as we worked out earlier on, this waistband is going to be a little bit longer than our actual waist measurement than what's needed. So you need to leave a little bit overhanging on either side, leave a little bit more overhanging on one side than the other, because this is where we're going to attach the buttonhole. Um, it's quite hard to understand. I hope visually you can see it a little bit better. Um, so yeah, make sure you've got extra on either side so we can close it off all nicely. Uh, then you're going to stitch the waistband to the actual skirt. The skirt 
shirt needs to be right side up, the waistband needs to be right side down. Sorry, this material is really similar on both sides. Starting on the end of the waistband that has less of an overhang, you're going to fold that end over so it's going to be nice and neat. You're going to iron it down. I'm using my little mini heat uh, pretty heat press here because I find it a lot easier. You're going to go down the top of the waistband now, so whatever's the top of the waistband, and you're going to fold it down by about half an inch and half an inch to an inch, it doesn't really matter too much, and then iron it down. So here I'm now at the end with the longer overhang. So like I said, I have a little bit more left over on this side. So now what we're going to do is you're just going to fold that in slightly, but you're not going to fold it in so that there is like it closes off the end completely. You're going to have a little tab left over and this is where we're going to put the buttonhole. So just fold this in a little bit. Don't fold it completely in half all the way. As you can see here, this visually is a little bit easy to see. Um, but with those folding down all three of those sides, it's just really nice and neat. But we still have a little bit left over for the buttonhole. So once you've done that, you're then going to go down the whole waistband again and you're going to fold it directly in half again. So uh, your waistband has gone from about four inches to probably maybe to one and a half to two inches uh, so it's a nice thin waistband but it just encompasses the top of the skirt really nicely and just makes it really neat again i hope this is kind of making sense to you if you've got any questions feel free to pop them down in the comments and i'll try and get around to answering them um if you ever want any kind of more detailed videos on how to do specific things like for example the invisible zipper but in detail or the waistbands like this then let me know and i can see what i can do here you'll see I did also do a straight stitch just to close off that tab as well on the side along the left hand side there. Um, so yeah, this is what the actual waistband looked like once the straight stitch was done all the way across. It's really nice, really neat and it actually looks really professional. Um, it just closes off those raw ends. So now the last thing to focus on is just by just doing the buttonhole really. So I made a little bit of a line here and this is where I wanted my buttonhole to go. Um, my machine has an actual buttonhole thing on it which again I need to practice a little bit more with but created my little button hole button hole button hole um, with my machine and hand sewed on the button underneath so there you go so it wasn't perfect by any means but I don't know I think it's pretty cute uh, what do you think let me know in the comments so and there we have it would you know it actually works this is the finished skirt really really cute i really like it definitely really like this choice of gingham fabric it's gonna look really nice for summer and as you can see we have pleats made by a fork so it definitely works it's a little bit trickier than instagram and tiktok make it look because they just whiz it together in 0.005 seconds it takes a little bit of getting used to but it definitely does work so yeah, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I've picked out a couple more videos down here that I think you might be interested in. See you in the next one, bye!